This is a fourth stimulus check, stimulus program, and news update. A federal judge ruled that the CDC does not have the authority to extend the eviction moratorium, which means more evictions may start to happen. Also give you a free resource of how to check the current rental assistance programs. Money is starting to run out in certain stimulus programs, and some states are cutting off the unemployment benefits and offering back-to-work bonuses instead. We'll also give you the latest updates regarding the fourth stimulus check. I hope you're having a fantastic Friday so far. If you appreciate these straight to the point updates, then hit the like button down below. So the NFL is providing 50 free Super Bowl tickets to vaccinated fans as part of the Global Citizens Vax Live. So let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. Is this an incentive to get vaccinated or a reward to get vaccinated? There's also a lot of other companies offering free things for getting vaccinated, such as Krispy Kremes with free donuts, Budweiser with free beer. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments below. Next, let's talk about the federal judge who rules the national eviction moratorium exceeds the CDC's authority. So back in 2020, former President Trump had a loophole to extend the eviction moratorium through the CDC. President Biden extended it as well. But now a federal judge is saying that the CDC may not have the authority to extend the eviction moratorium. It could be done through other federal programs. Uh, they're not saying whether or not landlords can now use this ruling to evict their tenants. This may be the case over the next few days and weeks. I'll keep you updated. They're saying that they're, uh, the, it's unclear what the immediate impact of the ruling will be. But if you want some rental assistance programs and you want to know how to access them, here's a free tool. Go to the National Low Income Housing Coalition Coalition website. If you scroll down, you could see all of the state and local rental assistance programs. You just highlight uh, your city or state and you go over the link or you click the link and then you could apply for the rental assistance program. If you know anyone who could use rental assistance, uh, share this video, share the link with them so that you could help them out. Next, let's talk about Kristen Gillibrand and uh, touts the legislation to lower drug costs, saying this idea is deeply bipartisan. So Democrats have tried to lower the cost of drugs for a while now. They had a proposal for it, but it didn't make it into the American Families Plan, even though uh, President Biden said that he wanted to lower the drug costs. Here is Bernie Sanders talking more about lowering drug costs. If we can do what has never been done, Chris, and that is take on the greed of the pharmaceutical industry. They have never lost. They could double the price of your medicine tomorrow, totally legal. If we can take them on and go to the American people and say, you know what? We re reduced your prescription drug costs by 50%. And by the way, because we negotiated prescription drug prices with Medicare, which every other country in the world does, we have enough money to expand Medicare to cover dental, hearing aids, eyeglasses, and lower Medi-Cal eligibility age to 60. At this moment, what is the right thing to do policy-wise makes very good politics. And that is to continue Biden's effort to be bold, to go big. Lowering the drug cost for Americans seems like a no-brainer, especially for the elderly community who could barely afford to cover all these crazy drug prices. It, the drug prices in America are sometimes 10 times more than other countries. Even President Biden called for drug pricing reform this year, but it's an empty call. What is so complicated about lowering the drug prices? Well, if we look at this right here, American politicians, both Democrats and Republicans, are being lobbied heavily by the drug companies. So this is how much money was lobbied for all the different industries in 2020. If we look at pharmaceuticals and health products, $306 billion was lobbied, or otherwise known as a bribe to politicians or in their pockets, or if you want to call it a campaign fund, but $306 billion was spent just in 2020 to probably keep the drug prices the same and not lower them, which is why this is such a complicated issue. President Biden left it out of the American Families Plan. A lot of the Democrats are trying to put it back in the American Families Plan. I'll keep you updated on what happens with lowering the drug prices, but it's a very corrupt issue 
I think. Uh, spending $306 billion to save the pharmaceutical billions of dollars in the future. Uh, I'll keep you updated on that. Speaking of empty promises, let's talk about Social Security. So Social Security beneficiaries urged, filed, or, are urged to file tax returns to get missing stimulus checks. So not just Social Security, but anybody, if you didn't get your stimulus check yet, you could still file a tax return until May 17th so that you could claim any missing stimulus money. Highly recommend doing that if you haven't gotten any stimulus money yet. But referring to the Social Security increase, Biden's tax tax proposal leaves out Social Security so far. So another campaign promise that President Biden made, if we look on his website, it's still there. If we scroll down, we could see that it is increased monthly Social Security checks by $200 per month as proposed by Senator Wyden and colleagues, seniors and people with disabilities are uniquely at risk right now. So another empty promise, President Biden said that he would raise social security. He was going to increase the payroll tax. So that would pay for social security and have an increase with social security. For whatever reason, President Biden is silent on the issue, as well as a lot of the other politicians. Uh, there are big promises made, but nothing has come so far. They just have the proposal for SSI getting a $279 per month increase. No other social security beneficiaries. I'll keep you more updated on that. As far as the infrastructure package goes, so uh, there's some political drama. I'll show you how this ties into the infrastructure moving forward. So uh, former President Trump rips Cheney, McConnell, and Pence over 2020 election. So there's been a lot of drama in the Republican Party going on right now, and there's kind of a power struggle going on. And even though uh, former President Trump kind of made a lot of low blows to Mitch McConnell, while Trump calls him gutless, Mitch McConnell says, focus is 100% on stopping Biden. So rather than working together, regardless of how you feel about Republicans and Democrats, it's all about the American people, but it seems like it's a tribal mentality going on now between Republicans and Democrats. And I feel like the divide has never been so deep before. So McConnell, rather than saying doing what's best for the country, just wants to stop Biden at all costs. President Biden responds to this saying, still ready to compromise with GOP infrastructure despite McConnell comments. So this is going to make things a little more complicated, especially if the leaders of the Republican and Democrat parties are fighting with each other. It's they're forgetting what they're what what it's all about, which is the American people helping out Americans, not trying to fight each other, uh, you know, whichever team, whether Republican or Democrat wins. Personally, as an independent, I don't like seeing any of this drama because then it means that more Americans are going to suffer while these politicians living in their bubble, having six figure salaries, million dollar net worths, they're completely neglecting neglecting how the rest of America is living, especially a lot of them still struggling from the pandemic. And all this fighting does no good. It just prevents more help from being done. Uh, also, President Biden has been on a campaign trail, or not a campaign trail, but uh, trying to promote the infrastructure package in different states. And he, Biden falsely claims that $2 trillion infrastructure plan will create 16 million jobs, which isn't completely true. So he said that all the economists, including the liberal as well as conservative think tanks, point out we will create up to 16 million good paying jobs. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. So according to the Moody Analytics, it's saying that um, that the U.S. economy would add roughly 16.3 million jobs through 2030, regardless of whether Biden's American jobs plan passed. So that's the data right there. Also, I like to give you multiple perspectives here. So here's the Republican perspective on the infrastructure plan from Senator Josh Hawley. Uh, question, uh, Senator Hawley, you're such a superstar. I want you to tell me and all our viewers that you can stop this crazy high tax, uh, high spend uh, infrastructure bill that's not really about infrastructure. It's just about taxing rich people and redistributed income and breaking the bonds between welfare and workfare. Tell me you can stop it, Senator Hawley. Well, I can tell you that I'm sure going to oppose it, Larry. And I think that so long as the filibuster is intact, we can stop it in the United States Senate. 
and uh, we, cer we certainly should. You've put uh, your finger right on it. I mean, what this will do is, this is a, a special interest giveaway to a bunch of liberal projects. It's going to hurt middle America. It's going to hurt blue collar workers. It's going to hurt the folks who produce the jobs in this country and who work the jobs in this country. And the, the, the expansion of welfare. I mean, what we have here are trillions of dollars in new welfare spending. Why the Democrats think that that's going to help working people is beyond me. Let me know your thoughts on what Josh Hawley said. I think him saying that it's just going to hurt Americans is not true. I think it will help some Americans, but also I agree that it is pretty bloated. A lot of the politicians put their own proposals in there for their own agenda that isn't going to directly help Americans. So I'm kind of in the middle of what he said. He didn't speak all truth, but he kind of neglected some things as well. Now, let me know your thoughts on that. Also, if you appreciate all the time, energy, and effort that went into making this video, hit the like button. And if you want to know the latest on the social security increase, fourth stimulus check, home buyer credit, child tax credit, as well as all the other stimulus programs that could help you save money or put money in your bank account, subscribe to the channel if you want any of that information in a fact-based, fast-paced form. Next, let's talk about the fourth stimulus check. So the White House makes it clear that a fourth, stim uh, fourth stimulus payments are not free. So if you missed Jen Psaki, the White House press secretary's remarks regarding fourth stimulus check, here's a clip right now and we'll talk more about it. One last question, there's a bunch of lawmakers, including one I cover, who would love to still see another round of stimulus checks, a direct payment even every month till the pandemic ends. Uh, is that something that, it hasn't been in either of the president's new proposals, but that's something that could be on the table. Well, I mean, first I would say that in the president's new proposal, he does call for uh, an extension of the historic, uh, an historic expansion, I should say, extension of the child tax credit. And if uh, passed, the families of tens of millions of children will continue to get regular payments that total up to $3,000 per year for kids age six and over and 3,600 for kids under six. Uh, obviously, we're continuing to evaluate what their needs are uh, to continue to get the pandemic under control, put people back to work, but we think that's also a proposal that will have a long-term benefit. Do you think that there could be another round of direct payments in one of these bills? We'll see what members of Congress propose, um, but those are not free. What do you think about Jen Psaki's response? I thought it was a little harsh and a little condescending the way she said that it's not free. It's more of her tone. Uh, so when she was asked initially about the recurring stimulus check, she gave her robotic answer, just talking about child tax credits. But when she got the follow-up question, she kind of had an off the cuff type of response, kind of on the spot. And I feel like her true feelings came out and the way she said it's not free, uh, it was a little condescending to me. At least that's what I felt. Let me know your thoughts on that. Regardless, it's still up to Congress to push the fourth stimulus check. So regarding the fourth stimulus check, uh, it seems that the White House may not be completely on board, at least according to the press secretary, but now it's really up to Congress. Congress are the lawmakers who pass these laws, who vote on them. It's not really up to the White House or the president anymore. They just signed, or the president just signs off on it moving forward. And actually, exactly a year ago, Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, and Ed Markey want to give Americans $2,000 a month during the corona crisis. So this came out May 8th, 2020, a year ago, and uh, we're still, I guess politicians are still fighting for the $2,000 per month stimulus check. I'll keep you updated on what happens next with that. Next, uh, Paycheck Protection Program, also known as the PPP, has run out of money for most borrowers. So it seems that if you, uh, for any small businesses who wanted the Paycheck Protection Program, money is starting to run out or has run out and you can't get any more of that. This could be a good sign that businesses are doing better right now, even though a lot of them have uh, struggled and gone bankrupt during the, vi during the pandemic. It seems that more businesses are starting to prosper. Also, Republican governors are cutting off unemployment benefits to force people back to work. So you may notice in your local area, there's some problems, especially with restaurants trying to find workers because more people are making money from staying at home collecting unemployment compared to going to work and getting a paycheck. Uh, so there are jobs out there now, but it seems that people don't want to work. So it looks like South Carolina and Montana are ending a call to pandemic unemployment benefits for jobless residents, and they want to include, uh, actually, wait, <laughs> they want to uh, start to have back to work benefits and bonuses. So the, uh, 
uh, Montana will provide $1,200 return to work bonuses paid for with funds from President Biden's $1.9 trillion package. So instead of offering unemployment, what some governors want to do is offer back to work bonuses. So once they start going back to work, then they get an extra bonus for doing so. Let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, next, uh, Elizabeth Warren pushes Biden to forgive student debt as White House considers his legal authority. So really strange. So um, Elizabeth Warren, Chuck Schumer have been pushing for the $50,000 in student loan debt. And President Biden said, OK, I'm going to check up on this. I'm going to check with the education uh, secretary and I'll get back to you. That's over a month ago. I feel like if he really wanted to check on it, he would have found out whether or not he can uh, get rid of $50,000 in student loan debt through executive order. So in my opinion, I think Biden, uh, President Biden is stalling on the issue. He did say $10,000. That's not in the American Families Plan. And he never mentioned it since his campaign. Uh, so I'll keep you updated on student loan forgiveness as well. That is all the stimulus news I have for you today. So hopefully cheer you up a bit. Here is my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hey, this is Bella. This is a tip of the day. I tell you the one thing they should do. When you when you make something dirty, you have to clean it up or, or ask someone to help you. Like if you made something like really dirty, you have to, you have to clean it up. And also, sometimes, I made a really big mess. And with the stock market being at a really low point right now, this could be a great way to invest in some stocks you've always wanted at a discount. If you want to learn more of how to invest in any stock you want as low as a dollar through something called fractional shares, you could click this video over here. It's on my Y Sense channel. I walk through the process of how to invest in any stock. It could be as high as Amazon at $3,000, Tesla at $700, and you could just invest $1, $5, $10, however much you want. Click this video if you want to learn more about that, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe, thank you for watching.